Welcome to the grim, lawless 23rd century, following the fall of U.S. Gov and mass depopulation of major cities at the hands of the multi-trillionaire de Huberton family. Baptized in radioactive hellfire, a rare mutation makes Turbo a fiercely pumped scrapper, haunted by specters from her past, surviving the post-apocalyptic wasteland one deathmatch pit fight at a time. But when she rescues the stunning trophy girl, the unlikely duo are thrust into a harrowing odyssey, evading marauding berserkers at every turn on their way to the ultimate showdown as they uncover the horrific truth behind the fall of humanity. Good morning, Jake. How are we do it. Good morning, Kurt Stir. What's happening, my friend? Oh, you know, the day and time I always look forward to. Sundays with Jake and making comic books and talking about comic books and... And hopefully not singing. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, welcome Whoa! to another episode of Turbo Pit Fighter, where we are drawing live um, on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm Jake. This is Kurt, as he said. And we are creating a post-apocalyptic comic book called Turbo Pit Fighter about a strong female who is uh, living in the wastelands trying to survive. Um, Kurt is working on issue one, doing the inks, and I'm working on issue two, doing the pencils. And we're uh, today we're going to have a couple of segments. Um, one is uh, thinking about issue three. I do have some um, some plot ideas, and I'm going to be running them by Kurt for the first time. And uh, you know, I hope I'll get his reactions. And Kurt is also going to go over uh, some. Uh, a, mo a movie he saw, um, and we and we uh, always try to cover our pop culture uh, requirements every time too. So, um, Kurt, you are working on the sequence there where Turbo is jumping out of the truck and going to be saving the uh, trophy girl from certain carnage um, and uh, fighting the hate breeders hand to hand with her uh, spiked gloves and her spiked boots it's, and uh it's looking good um he's using a high-tech c pen which is a uh the, the the modern day version of the rapidograph pen it has a very thick a very thin uniform line and what number you're using there is that a point four using or a point five point five point five so uh i i keep forgetting is it the the numbers get um thicker as they go up, right? So the skinniest one is a 0.3 and 0.4, and, and then the thickest is a 0.5. Skinniest is a 0.25. Um, oh, I'm right, actually going right. to, I'm going to use I, it on the uh, tire in just a minute because I just, it's like, actually I'll do it right now. I mean, you I, know, I, uh, you, I haven't had one of those for a while. I have a, you I have a introduced, you, you introduced these pens to me. Um, so I'm trying to introduce that. the world to them, but folks, get your yeah. if you're, uh, you know, if you've ever if you've ever uh, fumbled around with rapidograph fumbled. pens, good God, man, it was the, it was the worst thing Putting in, in ink life. cartridges and trying oh to refill God. it with the ink it was, splattering it, all it, over the place. It was as bad as doing airbrushing, you know. So the, the effect was always what you wanted, and when you got it, it was the best thing in the world. But oh my lord. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing these are worse great. than getting so a you can splatter. see. If I you can you can hang up your just that Kohimor. tire. Yeah, the tire, and then the yeah. the other lines around that tire is a point five. But you can see yes. how it just gives that like gray. It's just phenomenal, Jake. You know, it's it just is. Phenomenal. But then, but then, if you're doing all that on the original art, I don't know why you're scanning at three hundred DPI. You should be scanning at four fifty. Well, yeah. I still have I still have all of that grayness, funkiness. So, you know, because like I say, I do eighty percent of my line work with um, uh, my Funosuke, my high C pen, my uh, high C pens, 
and then even putting in some spotting black and some thick brushwork with this pen, which is predominantly what keeps um, the cohesiveness of the comic book page. But then I started laying in the gray values through uh, um, the water soluble graphites and color pencils and spray paints, and then then even right. work layers uh, back I'll, on it. But so these layers are always. Button. Yeah, I mean, we love the toning that you do, but when when you have a 0.25 line on the page, that's not going to hold when you're only scanning at 300 DPI grayscale. It's going to turn into mud and dots. So that was my question. Why don't we, you know, just as a rule, scan everything at at least 450? Yeah, that's what fine. I would do because you could blow things up later. You have all the flexibility in the world. And, uh, you know, going back to the original art to, to redo things. Well, so when we, when we get to the next set of six pages um, for teaser number three, which we're kind of sort of working on already because I'm the guy that's finishing the pages, we will get into, uh, you know, scanning. I will scan those pages. You will be able to, at that point, be able to give me uh, editing feedback um, based on those scans. So we'll, we'll really look at those pages, but then we're going to create a shared, um, PSD file because then we'll have the lettering, uh, uh, fun. So you'll be laying in the text in on that file, send those six files, PSD page files back to me. I will then do my thing with hand lettering them and then they'll, be scanned, put back in, and then go back to there. Because up to this point, we have not had any kind of consistency in, you know, establishing the format of the page, let's just say right now, as a PSD file. No, well, it's, you know, whatever, whatever you save it at, at the end, once it's flat, JPEG, um, you know, the JPEG is fine as long as there's no compression. But, um, you know, while you're working on it, if you want to be, if you want to have flexibility for layers, like adding on, uh, adding on word balloons that might be changing, then, uh, then yeah, it's fine. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get our workflow together. You, and if, uh, if we got a little wonky there, I don't know if everyone, you know, is following our alphabet soup. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, uh, I mean, ba basically I was just saying to Kurt, uh, if you're going to use lines that fine, scan it high res so that, you know, scan it once and done, you could always down sample, but you can never up sample. And, uh, you know, and, uh, I'm, I'm a proponent of that. Cause then you do have poster size options or whatever. You can blow up a panel, but al also just on the regular printing, people can take their loop or their magnifying glass. And they could zoom in and they can see those fine lines. And are, are people going to do that? 99.9% .9 might not, but, um, you know. Definitely, definitely <laughs> won't. Definitely won't. Because <laughs> you're, talking, be, you're talking printer I'll talk. Know. I'll be like asleep, the... soundly, soundly asleep in my bed <laughs> at night because that fine line that you're drawing didn't get lost. I mean, you know, they're... And look, that look. That's the that's the thing about original art, right? Original art has things that you don't see, um, you know, in, in, after the after you know reproduction, and um, you know that's uh, one one day somebody's going to care. Um, I am working here on page twenty of Turbo Pit Fighter number two. And I'm just going to uh, draw a panel here where uh, a guy is going to get his hand blown apart. And um, I'm, I'm doing my blue line pencils here and that, that lead into the dark pencil. Um, and I'm going to be trying to talk. We're, we're going to be trying to talk as we do this so it's a little bit of multitasking a little bit of concentration but um Kurt, why don't you fill us in on this movie you saw you did send me a preview uh love lies bleeding is a uh a lyric from an elton john song that is uh is earwormed into all of our brains for decades so it's so it's a catchy title uh for a movie uh, you sent me the preview. I assume it's because there was a burly uh, 
female uh, weightlifter character um, because otherwise it just seems like a crime drama ish. Uh, but most um, definitely, yeah. What? What? How did you find it? What caught your attention? And and what's your review? And um, no spoil. <laughs> no spoilers. Oh, I, I can't. I can't. I can't spoil it because it. The spoiler is what makes it worth seeing the movie. Um, but I can tell you this, um, it, exactly the way you see the trailer is what you're going to get in, based on what you think. And I'll tell you what, I watched it for two reasons. Uh, the first reason was because we're working on Turbo Pit Fighter. And um, we also do the Indie Creator Exchange. And I've been sending emails out to uh, creators that we had interviews in the past. One of them was uh, Gautam Shioran, who did um, uh, The Last Earth. Uh, and he's working on issue two right now, so we won't see him for a little bit. But he, he put a little uh, BTW. Um, if you and Jake haven't seen this, you should, because it has a really uh, uh, similar dynamic to Turbo Pit Fighter with Trophy Girl, um, you know, muscle-bound gal with, um, you know, uh, let's say a wafier, you know, female. Um, it is it is based on two women falling in love. So that's, uh, that's one part of it. But it's very, in my assessment, close to, um, <laughs> this is hyperbolically, <laughs> but David Lynch's Blue Velvet. Oh, okay. and yes, there. And I, I would go toe to toe in arguing with. I think her name is Casey Rose, um, who's the director and the writer and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would go toe to toe with her because there were very Lynchian images and also. Um, uh, a Mulholland Drive lean in uh, at and and I'm gonna say at the end, but it has nothing to do with Ma Mulholland Drive. It's just one of these visual things. So, so um, if I was to say you should see it, uh, I would say please do if you are into said elements that I just put forward. Um, I think it was beautifully made. Um, Ed Harris uh, is the, uh, oh the, bad, my. the bad guy. That's Plain. the second. That's the, I will watch anything with Ed Harris in it. I don't care what the hell he's doing. He is one of my favorites um, next to like Val Kilner. Um, you know, just these yeah. guys that just take a character, Viggo Mortensen, you know, they take, they take a character and the way they own it makes you question if that's something – that they're familiar with. You know what I mean? There's just such a, like, <laughs> there's a well, depth the, the, that they can, they can in, generate. Yeah. I mean, in, in blue velvet, uh, you know, I think Dennis Hopper stole the, stole the yes, movie. Exactly. Um, and everybody wants to be these like really cool, like quirky bad guys. You know, there's been a trend ever since, uh, you know, the dark Knight and, um, Heath Ledger comes in and steals the Academy. Um, you know, I think there's a Nick, there's a Nick Cage movie out where he, where he produced, directed and everything. And, uh, he plays this bad guy called long legs. I haven't seen, yeah. but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing some buzz about that and, it, and how it's like, it's, it's kind of uh, weird in a thoughtful way. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, figuring, you know, we, we talk a lot about that, like figuring out, the motivation of bad guys and why movie why creators of movies now get so much sympathy for the bad guys you know when uh all the way through the 40s 50s 60s 70s it was always no they die at the end you have to have crime. justice you know? crime and, doesn't pay right and uh you know i uh, that would be an interesting s survey of like which was the first oh a bad guy, you know, that you, that you felt like sympathy for. I mean, they do it in comics, you know, like, like Victor Von Doom and everything like Colonel Kurtz, Kurtz. Colonel right. Kurtz from uh, um, Apocalypse Now, because that was one of the first, and I'm only saying that because that was one of the first times I was lured into a movie 
uh, uh, where Charlie, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Martin, Martin Sheen, Sheen, Martin, Martin Sheen, yeah. Sheen, father, father of Charlie Sheen, um, you know, is on this boat ride up the uh, up the road up the river in Vietnam to go assassinate this uh, uh, traitorous uh, army colonel named uh, Colonel Kurtz, Kurtz yeah. and and, and that uh, was, played by that Mar- Marlon Brando. Book. Yeah. yeah, based on a book and, called Heart of Darkness, which I never yep. read, but oh, there was also it's, a doc. It's good. It's it was good. a documentary a called Heart of Darkness, I think, where it was about shot the by his, his of, wife. It was shot by right, his wife, Coppola, yep. Coppola's wife, right? Um, yeah, but the whole but, uh, the whole point of what I'm saying is that the the when you get to the point where he's having Martin Sheen and Marlon Brando are having these conversations, and Brando knows that he has been. You know, Martin Sheen's been sent to 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 assassinate him. If he can't convince him to come back with him, um, you start thinking, "Wow, uh, what did this guy actually do?" You know, like what right. we, you know we we have we have we have put him in a a box of descriptions and hearsay stories as a bad guy, and you got the good guy supposedly having to come in and kill, assassinate, and um, you're thinking why? Right. So you are left at the end like, was that necessary? So that and, was uh, one of the and, first movies for me. Yeah, well, Apocalypse Now, uh, the Redux came out like 20 years later. It was also amazing. It had some uh, missing scenes. It was a director's cut. But yep, uh, so. what you're talking about was that um, you know Kurt was um, maybe you know they were trying to present it like maybe he was justified because he was abandoning the U.S. mission in Vietnam, which was basically just to, you know, kill the, you know, just kill and subjugate and uh, napalm everybody, um, you know, the, and there was, you know, a pretext of, uh, you know, Cold War politics behind it all. But basically, we were just going into the jungle and just, you know, shooting and killing the resistance, you know, who didn't want us there. And, uh, you know, we were, we were saving the the South Vietnamese from the North Vietnamese, right? And um, because they were uh, being funded and armed by uh, communists or socialists, it was the Khmer. Yeah, Rouge, well, I think right? this was. I think this was way more about uh, Laos and Cambodia and our occupation of that those country without any without any any you know public knowledge. And uh, you know. We'll yeah, it came out years different. later that yeah. uh, came out years later that. Um, you know the the American public was being lied to about the progress of the war and the casualty counts and the you know the the prospects for winning. That was uh, the Pentagon Papers, which were leaked by uh, an in. By, yeah, if you uh, work for yeah. any government or big company, and there is a mistake made by that said company, they will find people extremely underneath them to take the blame for that. You know. But, you know, that's just, uh, that's the way the world is. So, yeah, so, so the, the, comp, the, um, the sympathetic bad guy, right? And then you, you could even go, you know, as far as like Thanos and, uh, you know, I've spoken to, uh, you know, people that are like, yeah, man, we should kill half the population, you know, and make life easier <laughs> for everybody else. And it's, uh, you know, and, and. Who and, the and, hell you know, are you hanging out with? society can blossom <laughs> and uh you know all the resources right you know and you you'll get you know decades and centuries you know worth more uh you know pro you know progress and everything and maybe this time you can control the population so it doesn't get out of hand and i'm like yeah but that's murder yeah, but... you know you know plus you know at the, you know plus the way they do it you know it's like if, you know, it was kind of like not very believable. Like he snaps his fingers and stuff. But um, you know, they Infinity were, they were to... right. I mean, Thanos was on this mission, and you know, we're and we're supposed to suspend disbelief. But you know, it, it they definitely try to you know put it you know a sympathetic perspective, and they do that with uh, Kill Raven in the Black Panther movie. You know, all of these. It's it makes for a good movie when when there's like some kind of understandable motivation for the bad guys 
but ba- you know, basically, when you're just mass killing people, that's you know, that's where the Avengers have to step in, or that's where you know, Spider Man or Iron Man or whatever. So, do you need um, the big, the bad guy, good guy scenario? Do you need to know that when you're going into a going into a show? Do I need to know what that the that the bad who's guy's the good doing? guy and who's the bad guy and what did the bad guy do and what's the good guy going to do about it? Right. Well, that? we have a, we. Yeah, do you need that? Not, no, I need a good story. I mean, you know, the, we're going to, you know, you think about the Is that a good that story? <laughs> Is that a good story? The good guy, bad guy scenario? Well, it's kind of formulaic. And, you know, we've, when we've had that for centuries, um, and, um, you know, uh, it, you know, it depends who the audience is. If, if it's for little kids, then they usually do stick with that. Um, you know, if it's, uh, if it's just, I mean, like the we saw the Furiosa movie, and we spoke about you know how it 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 did it did like drop right into some existing formulas, right? Yeah. Um. So uh. So you know it all depends. Um. No, I like I like to see those things unfold. Um. You know there have been move. There's been plenty of movies lately, including Marvel movies, where the bad guy is the good guy. You got Venom, and you know he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll stop killing people, and then you know he's he's having a fight with himself. Um, you know, by the way, I hated all the Venom movies. I saw both of them. The second one's even worse than the first. But um, people love them. People love Venom comics. I don't get it, man. Um, I don't either. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's there's a Doctor Doom movie coming out. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a Craven the Hunter movie. I don't know if that actually came out. Did they delay that? It just looks so bad. I think Zero knowledge. Uh, you can't oh ask me God. these questions. Anytime Jake asks a question about what's going on with the MCU or the DCU, it's a proverbial question to our fans. So if you know, please put it in the comment because I follow z- negative. No, it's no, they delayed it. They delayed it. <laughs> um, I'm looking Could up. Care they delayed less. it. Craven the Hunter. Well, we're talking about bad guys getting their own movies becoming the protagonist yeah but you're just going um, you're just doing the whole you're just running down everybody you know in the marvel world for comic books i'm just talking about all right well it then for like so then talk you know, about the, another the idea talk about it well that's why i brought in the whole like a, the apocalypse now you know or uh okay how did we get there did we get there from well, um, apocalypse now we were talking about loves lies bleeding but Apocalypse correct, Now correct. was a good a, a good example of a, a pretty typical bad guy, good guy story, but the bad guy is just portrayed sympathetically before they kill him, <laughs> right? Um, and Yeah, well, because you know, it's and, a message, you know, it's a message uh, uh, to society in the form of a question of like, you know, who's who's doing what here and why are we doing it? You know, and it's uh, calling out government and 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 the likes. But um, well, in in that case, but what about what about the Sopranos? What about uh, you know, Sons of Anarchy? Oh, that's a really so, that's so, really good. So yeah. so we can get away from Marvel if you want, but but you know, we have all of these examples of you know productions and shows and creations that have the bad guys as the good guys, and we're supposed to root for them even as they're killing, murdering. You know, selling drugs, arms, uh, you know, extortion, um, doing I mean, their job. Yeah, and you know, and I've, you know, I've, I've been, I've been that guy like at parties where this comes up, and uh, you know, or, or let's say like you know, vacations where you're, you know, you're with a couple of different families all chipping in, and then I say, yeah, what is this trend with the Sopranos where we're supposed to, you know, appre- we're supposed to sympathize with these mafia murderers and every single episode they murder somebody and yet we're that's the good guy and we're pulling for him and then you know i got a lot of grief for that because but i don't you know, think I said, but i don't think I that's the structure that, you know, in the past there was a code you know in the motion picture industry and i'm and 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 even more so on tv where the bad guy always has to get it in the end because you cannot send a moral message that crime pays, you know, and the comics too. We talk, we can talk about the EC comics and the, uh, you know, Dr. Frederick Wortham hearings and everything, you know, where they're, where they're, uh, ju- where they're glorifying, you know, acts of moral depravity. So, um, you know, I, I wasn't saying like, you know, censor it or anything, 
Well, no, I was just saying. I'm not, I'm not I was just saying. Let's it. have you know. Let's let's have some adult discussions about it. You know, because um, it is something pretty new and different. And I wonder, you know, how how society is being affected by. You know, they they always say, well, the reason why there's so much violence in the U.S. is because of our movies and our and our video games, right? So you know, how do you? How do you think, like you know, a, a generation of Soprano watchers is, uh, you know, grappling Doing? with the mor- gra- grappling <laughs> with the morale, the morality? It's like, uh, how should, if you can get away with it, should you do it? You know, or um, you know, should you put yourself in front of everybody else? You know, Sopranos was about like, you know, protecting those around you at any cost and loyalty and all that, but it was basically. Wow. Just the mob, yeah. Um, yeah, so just finish up about Love's Lives Bleeding, what you can tell us. Oh, no, I told uh, it. I, th- I think people should go and see it, and I think people should see it for exactly what we're, we're kind of going on about, is that it does not have a direct moral message. It's way more along the lines of being, uh, um, as David Lynch would say, a piece of art. It should not be explained to you. You should go in and experience the thing as a whole. You take what, what it is you need. And if you think you can get more out of it, you revisit it and you move on with your life. Um, and those, these are like- the kinds of, these are the kinds of uh, film like entertainment, if you will, uh, I call it more art to, to be able to um, enrich oneself. I don't need more tales of morality or reinforcement of Thanos being blah, 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 to tell me to be a better person when I'm supposedly not doing good. And I just, I just, no, that's I've been all so me. tired. I've been so that's tired of that for so long. That... And it's just not, in, yeah, that's, that's why I have no interest I have no interest in MCU and DCU because it has fixed ideology in it. Now, I agree. I don't think it shouldn't go away or anything. I agree with what your point was saying is that, you know, these are for children and family. So mommy and daddy and, and, and the kids getting together and watching something and experiencing something together where the kids don't turn to the parents and go, mommy, daddy, explain this to me. You know, because then that takes the the joy out of it for the for the parents. I get that. I get that. I just don't have kids, and I don't have any interest in uh, pulling that pulling that cart. You know, when it comes to entertainment. But love's li- love lies bleeding. Um, I think, and I and and I I got a monthly subscription for my birthday uh, for HBO. Um, you know, to go back and watch Rome. Um, I think I might go and watch uh, uh, House of Dragons. Maybe just, I just need, you know, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of content that I like each year, giving myself the uh, option of rewatching, catching up. My favorite, let's say, anti-morality, good guy, bad guy television show is true detectives and i will probably sit down and watch that all again that first season i'm gonna watch the fourth season um with um oh damn uh, jody foster so i'm really excited uh-huh. about that because the 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 story structure of true detectives i think is absolutely perfect i believe because it's it's a hard-boiled crime novel if you will and there uh-huh. is there there is one character who is let's say good like is the light in the whole darkness of the show but you really have to navigate that 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 show not morality based just like on the on the level of like what the fuck is going on and it's just it's hands down hands down no television series has come close to season one of True Detectives with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Nothing. Right, and they're they're on uh, they're on season two now. Uh, I no, they're I on. That. They're I'm on. Back, they just on finished list. four. They just oh. finished season four. Jodie Foster's oh, okay. in it. It takes place in Alaska, and right. you know, it's just 
this one's supposed to be just as good as I've heard in the reviews. And um, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm getting ready for this. So the uh, the preview for Love Lies Bleeding was one of those long previews where you get a pretty good sense of what's going on. It seems like the, uh, the you know there's this relationship between these two women and the bodybuilder girl uh, is working for a, a mobster or like a local gangster or something. Is that pretty much accurate? Yeah, it, like I said, it though the, the this is a time where you get when you watch the trailer, you're going to get exactly that and a whole bunch more. But I wouldn't I wouldn't expect a morality tale in it. That's all. I'm just kind of piggybacking on with this yeah. off the road uh, conversation yeah, about get in over good guys, bad and guys, and things you things know ratchet up. Well, yeah, I was. Watch. Yeah, I, w I was making a comment about um, just, you know, movies in general. And, you know, I, it, it's, a, it's a theme that, I, that I, I keep coming back to. And I like exploring, you know, in Turbo Pit Fighter, we have, you know, definitely well-defined, uh, you know, good guys and bad guys because we have the Dehuberton family that's screwing up the whole world. And then we have the resistance. But, you know, there, there are going to be a lot of questions along the way you know about uh you know where where people stand you know because if you're if you're neither one what do you do you know and that's where i love watching these post-apocalyptic movies because yeah you know yeah. everybody else is is just in survival mode and you know you have this um you know you have this dynamic where people are very quick to turn on each other and yep. you know i think we've spoken about like so many of these different movies and you know, even you can go to Heavy Metal magazine and see that. You can see like Druna and you can see all these like, you know, hellscapes where, you know, it, it's just uh, trying to stay alive and there's no more morality or anything. It's just, you know, getting through. Well, morality is struggling because society has collapsed and that's the moral fabric of society is basically do unto others as you would like them to be done unto you. Know, just all this you know, all the things that we experience in, in society for the last 3000 years, um, you know, it is always, it's always, uh, we're also learning. It's, it's very, uh, temperamental and it's sensitive and it's fragile, but when you want to reel just off the goofy freaking wall for entertainment, you know, you really want to just take yourself off roading. Um, yeah, the, 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 I still, I'm going to, going to, for, I'm going to get uh, a copy of Metal Storm. Um, you know, that's on my uh, birthday presents to me. And um, that, that I know and remember is just exactly that. It's just bonkers. Um, so, you know, I, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm not always like this. I'm just saying that I enjoy, I draw, I enjoy, being challenged by my entertainment, if I should say. I don't need it packaged. Um, I, I'm, I'm okay when there's huge questions and holes, if you will, in there. Um, you know. Yeah, it's great to uh, it's great to uh, argue about you know about the you know the current state of media, different stories, what's good, what's bad. Get some reviews, share you know reflections. Um, I uh, you know I I was trying to go see a movie this weekend with my brother in the worst way and the uh, and the only thing out in in theaters right now is that long legs which he saw already or else wolverine deadpool and yeah. you know i and there's just like so i'm not going i'm like i'm no i'm in no rush to see it i might see it if it comes on tv but bleh. i know it's doing big box office but uh you know i just you know the just the preview alone just doesn't make me feel Ugh. anything Ugh. um and uh, you know Hugh Jackman, you know I don't know if this is like his last uh, go around. I thought Logan was the last lower go around. Dude, because, you know, the money they offer these people to do this stuff is probably the most sickening part of it, you know. And they do great work. And I, I'm not putting anything down. Once again, if that's your stick, that's your stick. But yeah, you know that's what they do. I mean, it's still. I still think it's funny that you hired a six foot two Australian to play a five foot four Canadian. <laughs> right. Well, he had I the still think... jobs. So, that, that was it. They came apart right. of the deal. 
<laughs> I know. Well, I, I remember, you know, this, this uh, conversation was going back decades, but I remember when everybody thought it should be Danzig because yes, he was, uh, I do remember you know, too, yes. he was, he was short, but he was very built and he had the face and everything. And, but like, he uh, has you know. zero acting ability. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Come on. You seen Forget. interviews with him. You must've seen interviews with him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, I think, I think he was taking steroids or something because the way his, uh, the way he's aged over the years, it seems like his head has grown straight up like a watermelon. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there, there was, there was a, like, you know, he was into this like bodybuilding phase and everything, but then there was this video where he got his clock cleaned by this, yeah. uh, this yeah. guy in the band. And, you know, like, uh, you know, I think the bloom was off the rose after that because, <laughs> you know, it's like he picked a fight with this big, like heavy dude and the dude just, you know. <laughs> Was completely within his rights, knocked him the yeah. hell out, and that's just like terrible PR for if you're a rock star. Uh, although, especially you know, metal. I gotta, say, oh. I gotta say, I love, I love everything Danzig ever did musically. Um, some of his comics, we could we could criticize, Ooh. but uh, Ooh. but Ooh. Uh, great yeah, stuff. I, uh, love I'm a the huge stuff. A huge fan of uh, Danzig solo, The Misfits. Um, there was a band in the middle called Sam Heen, which is like one of the first goth punk bands ever. Very, very groundbreaking. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Danzig, I think in his solo career, I think by the time you get to his fourth album, it's not very listenable because it's very conceptual. But um, but what a career. And I love his crooning voice and all the classic Misfits songs. So um, I don't know if you want to pivot, but... Yes, we could do a yeah, we could do a segment. <laughs> so, I have my sketchbook here. Um, I was I was just drawing like a, a random RM soldier, um, and this is what it looks like when I'm driving a car and, and drawing notes and no, I'm making notes <laughs> at the same time. <clears throat> so, this is uh, this is the question um, that I uh, I think I was posing. I think I was posing this question to you the other day, but, um, you know, in Turbo 3, um, it has to, you know, the, the, the main thing that happens is, uh, you know, current Turbo is going to have a pit fight and going to be advancing from, you know, the regional rounds to the nationals. The real story, you know, the, takes place with young Turbo, and she has been charged with delivering this, package to a prison where Elevena is held prison. We're going to meet the famous Elevena character who was pivotal in the downfall of society through no fault of her own, but um, her, all of her technology uh, was, you know, fell into the wrong hands. And we're going to find her in this weird prison situation where she's captive, but she's also got access to laboratories. Um, we have to try to find a way to get Turbo into the prison. <laughs> so how do you break into a prison? No, you get arrested. That's the fastest and easiest way to get into a prison is to get yeah, arrested. Yeah, but they don't. Keep, yeah, but that's a not a good plan because they don't take people alive in these in these times. And well, what if it um, what if it was on a uh, a lovey dovey thing? Yeah, you don't really have control where they put you. You know, you you she has to get this directly to Elevena, so she's gonna break into the prison. Um. Hot air, <laughs> hot air balloon. A hot air balloon? Seriously. Yeah, that's... Seriously. That's, that's been in prison break movies. That's been one of, that's actually been one of the, you know, the, the, the God, I can't remember the movie. Oh God. I just saw a couple months ago and they all, they're all up against the wall and they're getting shot by the, um, uh, the prison guards one by one. And then this, all of a sudden, out of the sky comes this um, uh, hot air balloon, and then they've got artillery, you know, guns, and they start laying down fire, and then they get, they drop a rope. I mean, was it like a James Bond thing? Ah, anyhow, sorry, I digress. Well, yeah, the hot air balloon is really bulky, and one bullet takes it down. So well, this is the future. Yeah. This is a future. We're supposed to work off of that. You're just not supposed to grab it and then go. Come on, we've got to give it that. 
that turbo flavor. Right. Well, the turbo, turbo flavor world is not flavor around the world. It's not around the world in <laughs> eighty days. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, so, so here's what I was here's what I was working on, and um, you know what? So we 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 got to meet Polska. So I was thinking that um, we there there is a prison break in the prison. Polska is going to be trying to leave with two other prisoners trying to get out because Polska is young and she's younger than Elevena and she's younger than Elevena and all of her super squadron ladies. Um, and I was thinking about she's she's trying to escape and she's in a tunnel. She she got her way you know, uh, you know, into this tunnel complex and turbo. And then, um, they get into trouble and they meet turbo just, you know, momentarily and they get caught and turbo has the pack, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're fighting and fighting, but then turbo has the package has no other options, but to open the package. No, actually the, I strike that the guards, get the package they open the package turbo sees for the first time that it's a gun and just uh gr grabs the gun he let me help you with that and goes behind the gun and then fires the gun because it's pointed at his at his pals you know the guy grabs the gun and says what is this some kind of gun now i have a little idea here what the gun is going to look like it was going to look like, where, where's that little picture I drew? But it was going to be like in these little sections where you can see like these little atoms or these little, here, uh, here. It's like in these little sections. So there's like these chambers, three chambers in the gun. like And one thing goes into the other and into the other. And it has this like effect where it like multiplies on itself. Oh, right here. So this is... Uh, there's like a handle and then there's the first chamber, the second chamber and the third chamber. Then there's this double kind of like, uh, you know, barrel where there's like a big one and a little one right behind it so that there's, and what happens when it gets fired is that there's this, um, there's initial beam, you know, that shoots a projectile, but it also cleaves the air and the air, you can see the air parting, and then the air starts to burn and come alive with this like radioactive uh, light energy, radioactive fire, I called it. If the air explodes into electric radioactive fire, and then the beam swallows its own tail and follows up on itself, and by the time it gets to the front, it creates this gigantic explosion. So it blows up all the guards and blows up all the walls and the, and everything. And, um, there is, and so, uh, Polska will survive obviously, but her two mates will not. And turbo will survive, but that's how, uh, Elevena and her crew come in to clear the wreckage. Um, and because of all the smoke, that's why, you know, there's no fire uh, that the, uh, you know, the, there's no, the cameras aren't working and, you know, the other guards can't get down there in time. So Elevena and Elevena's people come in and they put the bodies into these carts and they, and they wheel them away into the labs where they're hidden. And that's how Turbo gets in and she'll wake up after she was out for days and she'll wake up and she'll meet Elevena and her uh, and her merry maidens here. But uh, you know that was how I how I uh, I got them into the prison where um, you know where they have to use the weapon one time and that gets them out of a fix. And that's how we're also introduced to what the weapon is. It's a microelectric magnetic radio laser sonic thermonuclear directed energy prototype. Shoots a projectile, delayed ignition of airstream. And uh, so Polska plus two in tunnel, escaping, chased, hide. Pre they press up again. So so Turbo and Polska will be pressed up together, uh, together momentarily. But they're caught, beaten, and stripped. And 
that's when turbo uh, and, and so the only chance the only uh chance they have is when the guy finds turbo's package opens it up says hey guys look at this some weird type of gun points it at his buddies and turbo runs up behind them pulls the trigger what do you think i'm fine with that where's the hot air balloon though <laughs> Won't you come and fly with my beautiful balloon? Come and say goodbye. All right, so um, I do you know, seriously, I am, seriously, seriously. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Right. I, I and I'm still grappling with um, you know, how we get to that. I want I want uh Turbo to have some peril before she gets to the prison. We can't just have her on that hang glider. And then all of a sudden she's in the tunnel. You know, it's got to be, I want to convey that it's a, a long journey. So that needs to come. So this all, this all has to come kind of at the end of the comic. And so, so uh, you know, she'll meet uh, Elevena at the end of the comic. Like this might even be the ending, right? To be continued. Ooh. But Turbo 4 will be the death of Elevena. Where they're, uh, I don't know. This is this is moving kind of fast already, um, you know. So the question is, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back to my notes, and I haven't seen them since the move, but I have laid out, um, kind of like you know a roadmap for each issue going from one to six, and uh, and I have to I have to hew to that. So this is all kind of like you know work work in progress planning, but. I have some good scenes here. I just, you know, need to know how we're going to lay those in. Um, here's a question. What spelling do you like best here? Because I want to name the fourth enhanced super vixen quadra. Which one do you like? Oh, 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 wow, 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 wow. So the first one's going to be Charvel. The second one's well, going to be... Well, you have to have a Q-U for Qua. You don't have to. It could just be the sound. Cadra? Just Oh, you mean the U? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I like the third one. I like the, I like the, the obvious... The third one? Yeah. All right. All right, let's Qua, move on. Qua, Qua, Qua. You like you that? You might one. not even need. You might not even need the O though. Q U D R A. Kudra. That sounds like Quadra? Arabic. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, stay with the O in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so so we like that one. Um, yeah. So she'll be the the fourth. So yeah, I'm working on the uh, the other part of the timeline where uh, Elevana enhances females it turns out elevana is going to be 18 when she does that not 15 it didn't work out uh to to happen earlier she she's she's doing animal trials when she's plant and animal trials when she's 15 um so i have that part uh of the store of uh turbo three that i'm in the planning stages and just looking forward to uh, key key uh key word there or phrase is planning stages because and you're doing this because you're finishing up issue two pencils i'm finishing up issue one inks uh so yep. we are we issue are thinking this is, is six issues these are six issues that will then be grafted together as one uh graphic novel so it's a self-contained story told in six uh issue chapters just so everybody is aware um a quick reminder so you know so we yeah. can we can tweak as we have been doing um, down the line. The only thing with uh, uh, issue one, pencils were completed in 2000, maybe even 1999. I think it was 2000. But anyhow, um, and then we, we went our separate ways because of life and then uh, reconvened to start this year. Amazing channel because we're over the 45 minute mark. Jake and um, we like to keep these bite size. So um, why don't you? Well, here let me do a real quick update. We have um, the for the Indie Comic Exchange, excuse me, Indie Creator Exchange. We have the following interviews coming up. 
Um, we finished Tanner Hurley, Pat Higgins uh, on Friday. So those two need to be uh, edited and uh, posted, which by the time this email, I mean, this uh, video goes up, they will also be up there. So there's a playlist to watch them all. Uh, Tuesday, we have Tom Cellini, who is a um, comic book store owner, writer, and publisher. And, and the comic book store part is really what Jake and I are excited about because we'll get an inside um, hearsay, thoughting, thought process, and, and what the hell's going on with comic books when it comes to there. Matt King next Sunday for his absolutely bonkers second volume of the Tales to Enlighten, 550 pages. I've been going through this. Um, it is just exactly that. The best way to describe it is bonkers. Um, you know, uh, so I don't want to ruin any of that. If you don't have a copy, there's a link below um, and you can get them directly. And then the following Sunday, we're having a gentleman by the name of J. Beth K. J. reached out last year, I think is what it was, um, or maybe beginning of the year, uh, and was just completely um, absorbed with the fact that Jake and I were taking this um, um, teaser approach, you know, six pages. This is our second one, which has 12. And he wanted to know how to go about doing it. So I pointed him to a couple of videos of us talking about it. He sent us, and there's two here. There's one he did a rough, and then this is like the next layer of his story as an, a, an ash can. Uh, Jake and I have them both. So we're actually really, really interested to talk with uh, Jay because he's going to unpack a lot of the getting started, which Jake and I constantly go on in the questioning of why aren't more people doing what Jake and I are doing? Find a buddy, find a partner, start a YouTube channel, Do keep yourself on the yeah. table. You know, just get, just get get going. Um, and then uh, guess what I got in the mail, Jake? Um, penthouse? Oh, Turbo Pit Fighter. I got Turbo Pit Fighter. So this is Jake's Turbo Pit Fighter. Uh, and wow, man, this really did come out awesome. And uh, so, um, you know, the way to get this from Jake is you have to directly contact him. Instagram, he's art teacher one T. Um, oh, I'm sorry, NY art teacher one T. Um, uh, you could just yeah, it's 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 quicker just to say Jake at hellclaw.com. Um, I was comparing the I was comparing the printing of yours to mine. If you open yeah. up to a random page, yeah, and yeah, I mean, you really got good fidelity. Um, but I wonder if that's just like, um, you know, like copy machine toner, what the yeah. longevity of it is, is, you know, yeah. if it can get scraped, you know, I wonder yeah. about all that. And, yeah. uh, you know, same thing with my printing, you know, it looks great in the beginning, but how's it going to hold up after five years, 10 years, 20 years? You know? yeah, we'll see. But I also say the um, uh, values, my values really come out um a little different. I, I like it. I it's, like it actually. Very, I like it. It's very it, interesting. I, I, you know, and I am all about variants. I do not subscribe to the one and done theory. I am. Let's rework this material, which brings us to. I don't know. By the time by the time this video comes up, the first month of August, the whole month of August, I'm running a campaign called Can Crom Sell a Hundred Copies. Uh, it, without Kickstarter. Um, Jake and I are actually going to sit down and talk about it a little bit more in a separate video. Um, so we can have it on this channel. But um, yes, uh, these are pages that I worked on um, back in 2018. It's ballpoint pen. And I revisit them with my gray values um, system uh, and style as it ends up coming. Uh, so there's, a, there's always growth. And it's really all I want to say when it comes to the Turbo Pit Fighter. Jake and I love working with one another, but we also love the community that's building around us. And we are about to, if by the time this video comes out, is not at a thousand subscribers, um, I would be surprised. We're over, we're almost at 980. Just want to be, take a big thank you. If you've made it this far, in the video, we call you a turbo knot, and we we know we're doing something right, um, and uh, we love you. And if you ever have comments, please make them. If you have questions, suggestions, we listen to them. 
Uh, our community tab has a really healthy uh, polling question every day and some great interaction. But other than that, Jake, that's all I got. Let these people get back Woo! to reading comics, making them if they choose. Right. And folks, don't forget to check out our other uh, series. We got Comics to Influence, where we do flip throughs and the creator exchange that Kurt so thoroughly described. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye, all. See ya.